If I'm an investor, we're living in a world of short-termism. Why would I own the stock today? Well, I think your question is exactly why we saw the stock price go down 9, 10% yesterday. I think a lot of investors, when I was talking to them several days ago, they were saying, yeah, we're looking for a growth story here. We're looking to see if Walmart's, you know, going to start, you know, getting some traction. And then they came out with these numbers that said, no growth for the next three years, essentially. Stick with us. And the investors said, no way. They did say on the growth front, though, I do want to point this out because this was amazing. We, we got this from Doug McMillan. He said, our dollars of sales growth over the next three years will be between 45 and 60 billion dollars. Think about that. That's like adding last year's combined annual revenue of Netflix, eBay, Whole Foods, and Starbucks to our top line. We are a growth yeah. company. And, I mean, that's a Shannon, big number. It, it yeah. is a big number. What percentage is that on total growth? Is that about 8%? It's about, about 3 to 4% a year. 3 to 4% a year. 3 to 4% annual growth. So, I mean, this is not like doom and gloom. Walmart's going out of business, which I think if you look at the stock price, you would think they're going the way of Woolworths. Not yet. But, you know, there's still a lot of good things happening at this company. They're still the world's biggest retailer. You know, 200 million people go into one of their stores every week around the world. I mean, they're still a humongous company. But, you know, Wall Street's a town without pity. They want growth. They want EPS. You've got to meet your guidance, your forecasts, and well, they're getting punished. E for exactly, Shannon. And Bill, that's why I'm curious. They must have anticipated going to this investor conference that people would not react particularly well. But this Maybe is that's a, why they came to long term, to do it. <laughs> Instead of doing it in Bentonville? Yeah. Exactly. But, but it's a long-term story, as, as Stephanie says. Did they just not make the case, or is the street just not open to a long-term story? Well, of course, the street overreacts to things. That creates opportunity. I mean, you know, I think back of the greatest, one of the greatest opportunities in the last few years was when people overreacted to Netflix. The stock fell, speaking of Netflix, you know, into the 60s. Carl Icahn bought it there and, you know, quintupled his money before selling it. So Wall Street creates, overreacts, creates opportunities every day for people who think there's too much overreaction. Matt, pull up the chart. I mean, Wall Street does this by design. They're going to push this down. And if you have long-term locked up money, you like a story like Walmart, great, buy it on the cheap. Well, I mean, I just wanted to show you what happened with Netflix. Bill is just talking about uh, Carl Icahn's great that. move yeah. there. Mm -hmm. This is the Dow Jones Internet Composite Index, so a number of Dow Jones Internet companies, and this is Walmart. And this is just year to date, so they've really whacked the market. Uh, incredible outperformance, even yeah. though they have now signed on less, fewer subscribers uh, than the market anticipated and missed uh, profit expectations. And I did talk to one investor yesterday who said the same thing. You know, after our doom and gloom conversation, he said, yeah, but, you know, it's looking cheap now. Maybe I'll buy tomorrow. So, I mean, maybe we'll see the stock up today. No. Carl, oftentimes people use Walmart numbers as a bellwether for what consumers are doing, the U.S. economy. This isn't the case this time, correct? Well, I, we have to look at it in two contexts. So one, uh, it's top line versus bottom line growth. So uh, in some sense, it's a unique Walmart story, which is why you see the, the movement in the stock price. Uh, but as we step back and look at the larger macro picture, uh, we see that wage costs are rising and Walmart's still anticipating a decent sales growth over the next few years. So uh, it's just kind of a reassessment uh, of expectations for Walmart earnings, which is leading the stock price to climb. But generally, the macro backdrop uh, is still relatively relatively favor. Earn, uh, wages are rising, uh, yes. demand continuing to grow, and, and I suspect, you know, Walmart has their own sales projections, but the outlook for consumer spending is not so bad over the, the medium term horizon. We saw retail sales data yesterday on the weak side, but this is, I think, just a short term hiccup, not the beginning of a significant downshift in consumer spending. That doesn't happen when the unemployment rates and fall. One of the places they're specifically looking for growth is China, actually, and we t asked Doug about the prospects in China. There's some pressure there, but there's not a complete tether to what you read in the news and what, what you see in the, the stock market in China. We have super centers in China. We're growing share. Our Sam's Clubs in China are doing great. And we bought the rest of an e-commerce business based in Shanghai earlier this year. So now we've set the stage in China, as we have here in the U.S., to win by creating a seamless shopping experience for customers. So, Shannon, are they looking for growth from China? How much of this yeah, growth do you talk about? China, they come from they've China? been struggling in China. Even bef before whatever is happening on the macro stage in China right now, you know, two, three years ago, they were still struggling in China. Uh, they kind of have a branding issue in China, which is interesting. I talked to some analysts who have worked in China a lot. You know, they said that Walmart's known as cheap. The Chinese consumer doesn't really like cheap. 
they like quality. So they like a deal, but they like quality. And Walmart does not have a reputation in China right now among some people for having great quality. They had some product issues, some counterfeit issues, some meat quality issues. They're trying to turn that around, but they have an image problem China, in China. They have a branding problem in here. US. It's not that they're not the, a massive big retailer, but people go there for cheap stuff. Mm -hmm. That's what their brand is.